so we are back here for a bit of a technical video even though it's not really that technical but it is involving taking stuff apart and wires and soldering so it it, it could be construed as being slightly technical um now if we go back a few uh, youtube videos and i showed you the uh, the new raspberry pi case that i bought the nintendo style case and ignore the rattling it's just because of screws uh, that are inside uh, to keep them safe i actually recently in the past mm, uh, I know a couple of weeks. It was some. It it was shortly after I put the video up of the case. I've stopped using the case, which is one of these Ness Pi cases. That's in the front of it. Just oh, you don't want to see it. You probably see it there. That's better. There you go. Ness Pi. Um, and it, it it's a nice little N NES style case for the raspberry pi and i think they look really smart i think they're really functional um and it 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 makes the pi look really cool especially when you're using it for emulation which i will go into in slightly further detail again on a another future video i know i've covered that already but i just want to go back over some areas of that again but anyway i am digressing I did have a problem, or I have a problem, with this Nest Pi case, and it is to do with the um, uh, the power draw or the power drain of this case and the internals on the on the power supply unit, and ultimately it stops the Pi itself from uh, receiving uh, the voltage stroke amps that it requires and and on the raspberry pi when you're using retro pi and so forth you get an indicator uh, on the screen in the top right corner of the screen and you get a little lightning bolt and that indicates that there's a power issue and i was and the more and more time i spent on on the raspberry pi in emulation the uh, the more and more i was getting that and i thought right this isn't right so it must be going wrong here so i quickly went on the internet and it is a known problem and it appears to be a design flaw with the case itself now a lot of people re have reviewed this case and and nobody's mentioned the problem with power um, at draw and the problems it causes which is a bit disappointing to be honest um, but anyway it is what it is now uh, what I did originally was I thought I'll oh, sod it I'm going to take it back out of that case and put it back into the original case I had, which is this one here, and the pie's in there and everything. And there's no issues at all with that case because the only thing that you're powering is the fan itself. There's nothing actually on the case. There's no extras on the case. It's just a case. Yeah. But after doing some further research on it, it looks like there is a manufacturing issue, uh, like I said, with the internal wiring on this and also the points that have been used for the wiring so what I'm going to do I'm going to try this and I am going to use some thicker gauge wiring and I'll show you what I am wiring and what I'm replacing and so forth and I think I'm going to use some different solder points as well there's other there's other points that you can use that have got more uh, that are bigger uh, points to use um, I haven't took this apart again since I've swapped the boards over, so I don't know specifically what I need to do um, or what's being referred to. So uh, I will quickly go through that and then I will actually show you guys what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And I really do hope that this fix works. I really do, because I would rather have that over that, even though that performs better than what that does. But but aesthetically, that just looks awesome. That does. I just think it looks really, 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 really good. Um, and yeah, and it is a known issue. It it really is a known issue. So I really want to sort that. So I'm going to cut to some video now in respect of all this cranked open and explain to you guys what I'm going to do and then I'll do it. And then hopefully I'll be able to report back that it works fine. Uh, this is inside the Raspberry Pi 
sorry, the Nest Pi case, not the Raspberry Pi case, the Nest Pi case. And what I'm going to look to do is that the power actually comes through here. It actually comes in here into this little PCB here. And it, it uses this cable in here to go down to one of the main PCBs which is actually the switch PCB. I've just started to take this apart. So, so this is the USB and the Cat5 um, uh, Ethernet uh, expansion board, uh, which plugs straight into the Raspberry Pi itself. And this here, if I'll just pull it out slightly. Right, that's the, uh, that's the board that's got switches on. So the reset, try and get that around so you can see it. So the reset and the uh, power switch. Now, as you can see, it's got cabling from the uh, from the power input, so that's the micro USB, and that powers through to the switch, and it's using this very cheap and pathetic gauge wire. So I'm going to replace that wire with thicker gauge wire, and I'm also going to use some slightly different soldering points as well for that wire, um, and. Then I'm also going to look at a bridge wire, which is another power cable wire, which goes from the, and it's getting a bit messy, so it goes from uh, the power switch, and it's this one here, and it links to the underneath of the USB expansion board. So get, if I try and get that up so you can see it, so it's this, it's that wire there, oh, that one there. So it's that, that small thin wire that goes between the, uh, the USB expansion and, and the power and reset switchboard. Again, it's a very thin piece of wire, so I'm going to look to replace that. So it's just those two, I'm going to have a go at that and see how I get on and I'll come back to you once I've done it. So after all that bravado of me saying that I was gonna unsolder this and solder that and do this and do that, after I thought about it for a few minutes, um, I've actually taken a slightly different approach. Well, a much different approach actually to resolving this issue. I don't know whether or not this has or will resolve it. It should do in theory, but it's in a messing around with all that soldering um, and um, and routing and wires and so forth. I actually decided to uh, to Dremel the back of the case out, and it's quite hard to do it actually when you're just doing it in your hand and you've got no workbench to work with, and it's quite a small hole that you're looking to make, and the bits that you've got are quite big for the Dremel, it can end up looking a bit unsightly, but it, 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 it's not too bad. I do wish I could have done it slightly neater, but the ends that I've got are quite big, so it, but it, it's fine, you're not going to see it. So what I've done is I've Dremeled the case to actually get a direct connection to the uh, the USB power port on the Pi itself. So instead of messing around going through this auxiliary version of the of the of the power and going through the rest of the boards that are inside this device, because uh, that's what's causing the problem and going for the switch and all that crap, um, I've decided to actually power the Pi direct as it is actually in the other case that I've got. So. You can see that. So the top hole now is the is the USB. So you see that. Try and get some focus on it. Yeah. So the top port is the USB on the Pi board itself. So and my power adapter is going straight into that. Uh, the bottom one was the original one. I've taken that 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 socket off and I've actually desoldered that from the internal boards as well. But apart from that, I've done nothing else to the wiring. Um, I still have have power going to the board, uh, so I've still got the light coming on, but the reset and the and the on and off switch now do nothing. Uh, to be fair, they never did anything of any great use before anyway. 
because uh, I had no scripts installed and actually these buttons I believe you can't use them anyway you have to butcher the buttons slightly to get them to work properly with the pie board to do a safe close down I always do that through um, uh, through the emulator front end anyway through RetroPie I always go and and close the machine down from there anyway so it's not really an issue for me I don't need the buttons it is nice that I've retained the light on the front the power light on the front so uh, that looks okay I have quickly tried this and I don't seem to be getting any power issues at all so what I'm going to do I'm going to uh, put it all back together properly i'm going to put the fan on there as well uh, make sure that's all working correctly um, and i'm going to give it a bit of a bench test over over the next sort of day or so and i will i will tack a bit on the end of this video before i post it up that actually um uh, provides some feedback on whether or not this has actually fixed the issue completely or not i've got a feeling it will do but let's wait and see um but uh yeah for the sake of five minutes just to dremel that out hopefully that is uh hopefully that's resolved the power issue but uh yeah i'll report back after some extensive testing now over the past uh, a couple of days in respect of of the of the the uh well i wouldn't even call it a mod i suppose it's a mod but nothing amazingly special or complicated but since i have moved to powering the pi direct which you can see again that's what I've done on I've effectively dremeled out the case and that is the uh, the original uh, micro and mini USB a power adapter port that's on the on the Pi board itself um, so now that I'm using that it is absolutely fine i've had no power issues whatsoever and just to underline as well on this specific pi it has been overclocked quite a lot i think it's 1.35 gig i've got the cpu can't remember what overclocked the um uh, the gpu to but that's been overclocked as well um and i have had a keyboard attached to it i've had my uh, my usb uh, Xbox 360 controller attached to it and had it connected through uh, the Ethernet port and it all works absolutely fine I, I've tried a, a number of platforms on it uh, in respect of, of of consoles computers being emulated tried uh, some of the real heavy heavy emulation setups and I haven't had one single issue and I was getting quite a few occurrences of power related issues and also to add as well is that I'm not using the the um, uh, the official Pi um, a power adapter it is just uh, something that I've picked up off eBay it's 5 volts um, and it's 2.4 amps uh, but it's only 5 volts uh, the official Pi adapter is something like 5.1 or something like that so it it compensates slightly for a um, uh, for a drop on on voltage if you have any issues with cases or so forth but even that alone will not resolve this issue um, uh, on this case it does what it needs to do now and it's in the case that I wanted it to be in you know because it is a I like the case I think the case is really funky so uh, yeah so if you've got a Pi 3 and you buy one of these cases I would recommend that you do some form of mod or you will potentially get issues um, so yeah hopefully this video has been of use to you guys and I'll speak to you again soon